Hey everybody, Chris Farad here, and welcome to a game called Fort Triumph. Uh, I've been trying to think of the best way I could possibly describe this, but it's tough because it takes a lot of cool elements from other games, but it also does a lot of cool stuff on its own. Uh, at its core, and the reason that I'm doing this is it's it's very similar to XCOM in terms of combat. Um, Cookie Bite, the guys who have made this game, reached out and asked if I'd be interested in checking it out and doing a sponsored video because of my history with XCOM. And I gotta be honest, I'm always a little bit concerned when a company's like, yeah, our game's like XCOM, and you're like, okay, <laughs> sure it is. Uh, but this combat is really similar, but does a lot of cool stuff on its own. It's heavily physics-based. I feel like the best way is going to be to kind of show you. Uh, there is a lot going on in this game. I'm going to start out by getting you into combat, and I want to show you what that's like. I'm about three and a half hours into the game here. And uh, I flew by, by the way, had a great time playing the three and a half hours. And I've just been kind of experimenting, getting to know the skills, getting to know how the world map works, getting to know our party members. And we'll talk about some of that uh, after the battle. But um, we're going to take on a story mission here, which is starting to ramp up in difficulty. I think this is the fourth story mission that I've gone on and uh, I've not seen it. So I'm going to do be doing this bl battle blind, but uh, let's get in here and begin. So your highest level heroes of each class are summoned to it. There's currently, I believe, four classes, but then there's a bunch of different factions as well. I'm playing in the campaign mode. There's a skirmish mode if you just want to kind of do battles and stuff. Um, currently, this is only on uh, PC, but it is coming to consoles as well, um, if you're into that kind of thing. So art style wise, obviously not like XCOM at all. And I don't want to just compare it to XCOM because I do think that it does a, a good job of standing on its own. You'll see why in a minute here. It's very apparent in battle. But I would say aesthetically, very similar to like a Hearthstone, right? It looks like almost a World of Warcraft Hearthstone kind of hybrid. And uh, it's cute. It's really fun. And uh, the storytelling is good. There's a, It's funny. Like it's really enjoyable. But let's get into the combat here. I'm not going to read out all of this because sometimes it can be a little bit lengthy. Uh, I've customized my characters. You can change their uh, names. You can change their colors. Uh, and I'll be able to show you all the different classes in this group as well. Uh, so this is me, Odd Iron Floss. Iram is my wife. We have a few others with us as well. We'll see in a second here. The Demon King, bad guy. Okay, we're going to try and kill him. He's going to have some henchmen that we're going to have to deal with, and we'll go from there. Okay, so first of all, uh, we've got Odd Iron Floss, Dexter Dogbane, Rampage Turner, and Walter Skull Splitter. Now, uh, Dexter and Walter being my dogs, by the way. Each of these classes operates differently. Um, this is the Paladin class, and he's more of a melee-focused class. He has a Brace ability, which can reduce damage coming in. Uh, he can lift objects. This nasty kick, this is where some of the physics start to come into play. So you can kick an enemy, you can kick an obstacle, you can kick an obstacle into an enemy, or you can kick an enemy into an obstacle, and you can set off these pretty cool chain reactions uh, that we'll get into soon, and I'll explain how that works. Uh, Holy Shackles is a paralyzed effect, so this person cannot move. Uh, it's guaranteed to hit, but it's got a cooldown. We've got a Rally, which gives everybody extra power and speed. And then we've got a Taunt. Good thumbnail. Basically, make sure that whoever we Taunt can only attack uh, that character. So, let's, uh, before we start going to everybody's skills, let's just get a look at what's happening up here. So, Walter Skull Splitter. This is a uh, Savage or a Barbarian class. Let's get moving in here. We've activated the party. Uh, you can see the overall goal down here. Find Orlean in her mansion. I'm guessing that's back in there somewhere. We're probably going to have a few groups that we need to go to. Uh, or go through, I should say. New abilities you're going to see on this one is a Claws attack. So she attacks twice for four damage. Uh, and then it applies bleeding as well. We've got the Daredevil Stance. So when you activate this, you get extra AP. You get three AP per turn per person. Uh, you can use those however you want. You can attack first, then move. You can move, then attack, use an ability, what have you. Um, you can see here, this is the health. This is the AP. This is the experience bar. 
And then these are kind of the status effects that are on each of your uh, each of your party members. Now, uh, what we want to do is we kind of want to understand what type of enemies we're dealing with first. You can see four enemies listed here. Uh, the Goblin Shaman. So he's got a bunch of abilities that we have as well. Once I show you our Ranger, uh, there's a couple of overlapping ones here. The scariest thing that we want to watch for is this Whirlwind. Because this Whirlwind can knock over a big object, deals a ton of damage to us, it can stun us, uh, it pushes us back off of objects. Um, but we can do that to them too. And so hopefully we can strike first. Now, one of the key things that you can do in this game is stun enemies. In my opinion, that's the approach that we want to take. Once you stun, they're only able to reposition. They can't attack or use abilities on the following turn. Sometimes they have a stun protection. These guys, they don't have it. So that's going to help us out quite a bit. Um, he's also got some other abilities here to replenish health, party heal, and fortify to protect an ally. Or an ally, but um, not too important right now. Let's see. Let me show you, uh, first of all, let's show off this whirlwind. So let's bring a ram in here. Uh, it's going to take one AP. You can see the blue outline that um, shows you how far you can go. And then your targeting is pretty, like, pretty far. Let's move up. These guys, uh, let's check these guys too really quick. So these guys are self-detonating. And they have a bomb. So ranged. This guy is melee. This guy is ranged, an arrow attack. And then a bomb, a smoke bomb. You kind of want to consider where we're placing these guys just because they can do the same things to us that we can do to them in a lot of scenarios. Uh, so this might be a bit risky, but we're going to go for this. We're going to try and stun this guy here by knocking this back. Uh, it looks like it is going to hit him. It shows you the direction. So if I was more down here, we would be pushing this straighter back. 73% uh, chance for this to land. Uh, let's go for it. Okay, nice. So we pushed that out of the way, pushed him back, and he is now stunned. So that's one enemy that we don't have to worry about so much this turn. Uh, she has an ability here called Dash and Slash that gives you an extra action point. I'm trying to look at a way that we can utilize her here, but it's going to be kind of tough. Everything, everything attack-wise or ability-wise typically takes two actions, and then your moves take one. Uh, so I might just move her in here. Because of some of the upgrades that we have uh, back at our fort, uh, these melee guys get some additional uh, benefits. So here's an example. The savage attacks its attacker. This is the class. Um, being hit by a melee attack limited to once per turn. So if somebody melee does come in here and attack, then we'll get a counter strike back at them. Our paladin benefits from that as well because he's melee. And again, that's because of an upgrade that we did back at uh, our fort. It's going to be kind of tough to get everybody in here in a position that's going to make a lot of sense. So we're likely going to take a little bit of damage here. What I'm going to try is we'll see if we can stun this guy out. Let's bring Dexter up here. Now, he's got this grappling hook that can pull enemies. If there's a bunch of enemies in a row, you can pull uh, through them and they'll all get hurt. As you can see in the animation, you can pull an object from behind. You can pull him into an object. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do here. Because of Dexter's specific skill sets, uh, he doesn't take uh, an aim penalty when he uses this skill. So normally your grapple hook would be just the same as your standard chance to hit. So being this enemy is in full cover, 17% chance to hit. If we use the grappling hook, we have an 84% chance to hit. Let's do this. Gonna pull him into the tree. He's now stunned. Excellent. Good stuff. We have two more that I don't think we're going to be able to stun. I might be able to paralyze. This uh, Holy Shackles only costs one. And let's... Uh, let's see. The wooden represents, like, a lower quality cover. And then the metal shield represents a higher quality cover. The problem is, is that they have all these same abilities and they can knock stuff into us as well. So we really got to be mindful. I'm going to see if we can reach this. I can reach the Holy Shackles. Uh, it ignores cover, but you can see at the top here, because of our distance, uh, I think I, I said this was guaranteed to hit, but it's only guaranteed to hit if they're not, or if they're, uh, 
It's ignoring cover, sorry. Not guaranteed to hit is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I do like that they give a solid breakdown of your percentage chance to hit and set the top of the screen. So you start with 100% accuracy and then you multiply that by the distance, it gives you what your chance to hit is. There's other factors in there, cover and uh, different status effects. But um, yeah, let's see if this can land. Flip the coin, 55% and we whiffed it. Excellent job, fantastic. Um, I'm gonna try to get in a little closer here if I can. Because these two units are stunned. And this this unit we really want to get in and use her basic attack. Get that bleed going. Okay, so he's throwing a bomb at the back. That's fine. You'll notice that something popped up saying cancelled reaction. What that means is uh, if you go into Overwatch or if you have these um, reactionary attacks, like um, when somebody enters your AoE as a melee character, that's going to cancel that. So if, it's very similar to XCOM. Somebody's overwatched, you apply some damage, they're going to get uh, the overwatch turned out, uh, turned off. Now, uh, we've got a good option here, and let's move in. You'll notice that we have these stars in the shield above uh, all of our characters. This is called stun protection. Sometimes enemies have this too. I imagine towards the end of this encounter, we're going to find stronger enemies that have this stun protection. Uh, it means that they get prevented uh, from being stunned on the first stun attempt. But if you kick people into multiple things, then that removes it and then applies the stun. Might be a little bit too much info for you right now, but um, yeah. Here we're going to see some chain reaction stuff. So we're going to kick him into him. He's going to take damage. This guy's going to get kicked into here. He's going to take damage. Let's go. And if there's somebody back there, this thing does massive damage and inflicts a stun as well. Because these guys don't have stun protection, they're both stunned easy peasy. And we can apply... Uh, we can try to get to these guys. We might just want to wait for them, actually. Uh, let's move... Let's move Dexter up here. These guys aren't in cover, so we can just apply a regular attack. 70% chance to hit. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, I'd say. And they have this detonation thing that we saw. Uh, so when he blows up, blows up everything around him. I think this guy has it too. No, smoke bomb. Okay, so it was just that guy. Uh, let's see. I just kind of want to experiment and show you guys as much as I possibly can. Um, these might not be optimal strategies. We're going to throw down electrocution. This works by not applying damage right away, but it's going to apply one damage for every tile that they move in the last two turns. Um... And it applies up to eight tiles. So let's throw this on. He's definitely going to want to move. And when he does, we will be ready. These guys have to come out to fight. But he's likely going to be able to just do this whirlwind attack on us. So there are a lot of circumstances where cover might not actually be your friend. And that's a key differentiator uh, between this and XCOM. I'm going to actually tuck her... I'm going to tuck her back here. And let's just brace for now. Let's see what these guys do. Okay, so he's entered an overwatch. Oh, see? So he hit that from way downtown. He's electrocuted himself. <laughs> Poor guy. He was going to die anyways. Uh, he was going to go down. Uh, so yeah, anyways... If you want to see that again, he hit the wind all the way down here, knocked this tree over, and did, like, a ton of damage. Now, there are health potions and things that can drop. Uh, you can bring them in from your inventory before you go into battle. Um, but we've got all these other accessories right now. So, uh, our paladin, Odd Iron Floss, is carrying the Mask of Preservation, so he gets extra armor. He has higher chances to evade at a re reduction of his speed, um, which is pretty heavily impacted. Um, because of his unique ability. All of these guys come in with unique attributes. Uh, this one is consistent, so abilities have a plus or minus 5% chance to hit for every successive hit or miss by the unit. It's capped at 25. This one is tenacious, plus one power and speed when outnumbered. Uh, this one is the same. And then he's got sprinter, so he's got extra speed on the first movement of the turn, but then he goes really slow after. 
and we're taking a hit to overall speed because of the Mask of Preservation. So, uh, let's see. Can I... Can I pull anything off with him here? I can maybe taunt this guy if we can't stun him. I'm a little concerned about our health situation here. Uh, let's see. We've got this dash and slash, so we get an extra action point. So if I come in here... Oh, that's right. I should have I should have taken a second to show how the Overwatch um, is explained to us. A group of human invaders busily tear up Orleans Mansion. Their leaders admits... A heated speech. Rondell, onwards, free yourselves from the yoke of our overlords. Lovely. Man must look out for himself. Preach it, brother. <laughs> there's actually, there's good humor in here, too. I'm going through it quickly now because I just want to show you the combat. But, uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. I do wish it was voice acted. He's saying, join us and we can loot the treasury and split it. And we're like, hmm, maybe. You could not be possibly thinking of this. This is true. This is true to my real life. My wife is in charge of the finances, so, you know. Okay, so he's basically saying, well, it's on. So we triggered another group, uh, which is quite scary. Um, this is a healer, and he's ranged, I guess. If Holy Light hits, applies a blind for two turns, which hurts our accuracy. This is melee. Melee and melee. You can also see, like, where they're able to reach. Um, so, the scary thing here is that I want to get damage in, but now I'm a bit concerned. Uh, this guy, the Goblin Shaman, I think we're just going to go for a stun here. We're going to kick this chair. I'll actually use this first. So let's get another action point. We're going to kick this chair back. So he's stunned. And that gives me an opportunity to pull back. And get ready for the next turn. And hopefully we can clear these guys out now. Uh, I got to watch for that, for that wind attack coming in. But he, he is stunned. So I feel like taking this cover is probably okay. We have a 27% chance there. My pull is on cooldown. I have an ice arrow, but that's going to be the same chance to hit. Uh, we could set up an overwatch. Hmm. Let's see. Who else do we have? We might have to go whirlwind here. I think we will. Let's go whirlwind. Oh my god, it's, it's, this is XCOM. Oh my god. It's XCOM. That is struck. Okay. So we can either... Let's see, what's our best plan here? Do I want to just taunt this guy? I might just taunt him. To assure that he doesn't uh, attack anybody else. Namely this guy. And let's set up an Overwatch in case this guy moves. So, the way Overwatch works is you, you just set it, just like in XCOM, and anybody that comes into range um, gets shot at. I'm just looking at what Smoke Bomb's going to do. Blinds targets in an area, blinds allies and enemies alike. So, I'm about three and a half hours in, and there are abilities that I haven't seen before, namely Smoke Bomb. Uh, so, it's very likely that he could hit these two. I don't know how big the area is. Okay, so we've got an Overwatch set up there. Looks like he just took a shot and whiffed. And we're going to get overrun very quickly. These guys look like more basic enemies, though, which is good. We should be able to take this guy now. Let's do a kick. The kick never goes on cooldown. He's stunned. And we've got this blink, but I think... Let's just go over here. The battlefields are always super varied, too. Like, sometimes you're fighting at buildings, sometimes it's more wide open. Uh, but there's a lot of different options that you need to be considering. And not all objects react the same. So these objects, like, bounce people a little bit further. The bigger objects can topple over. 
Um, we could have maybe come here to flank, but then I feel like we were a little bit left out. Let's do this. Let's set up an overwatch here as well. If I come around this corner, we will get that kill. And then these guys come in, and we have the Counter-Strike, so I imagine we're going to get attacked. She's got 16... Uh, she's got 16 health, though, so we should use it. And we're behind this wall, which I don't think they can knock down or anything. Let's just go for a regular attack. It should kill him. Beautiful. And we might get a counter-attack off on one of these guys that comes around, but... She may also take a bunch of damage. Okay, what I could do... What if we brought Dexter in here and put in some type of overwatch for the guys coming around the corner? They're pretty healthy. I have to worry that they run right past her, though. That's something to consider. And go for him. Okay, so he's overwatched around that corner. There's an attack. Here's our reaction attack. Very nice. And we get that bleeding. Okay. Now this guy, I'm not sure why he didn't come around. Don't care. I'm not going to ask those questions. I'm happy that we're still alive. Now let's just go in for a regular attack here. Six to seven damage. And he's got an ability in his tree. Oh, this is perfect. He's got an ability in his tree uh, called Healing Aura. So whenever he gets the kill, people around us uh, get a heal. It's buffed because uh, we've improved it. So originally it starts with one heal, but we took uh, a skill tree benefit right here to give an extra skill increase or an extra heal increase. Now, one of the best things about combat is that when you get an upgrade, you are able to, or when you, when you level up, you're able to select your skill upgrade and apply it immediately. You don't have to go back to base. You get to use it right away in combat. Now, we've unlocked a bunch of his standard abilities here. So I don't have the option to choose a new one. Um, but we can upgrade one of our previous ones to uh, buff it. So what do we want to buff? Well, Nasty Kick is pretty good. Um, we could go Hammer Strike and turn it into a bash. Ignores the target's armor and damage reduction. Uh, we have the rally with no range limit. We've got the taunt. It also applies brace, which is actually really nice uh, because you're reducing your damage considerably. Holy Shackles cooldown is reduced by one. You might think three turns isn't a big deal, uh, but it is. And you can see here what the requirements are for these other upgrades. So level nine, level 11. Let's take the cooldown on Holy Shackles. Uh, the other thing to consider, too, is that the way you gain experience is actually just by kills. It's not necessarily shared all the time. So if you need to prioritize a kill with somebody else, um, all the power to you to do that so that you can get that level up on whoever you want. Okay, we've got 10 health here. I'm a little concerned. It looks like we can, we're can we attacking like from here. Okay, good. Looks like we're poking around the corner to do that. Now, notice here, if I were to run in this direction, that red line is signifying that overwatch that I wanted to show you before. Uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to GTFO, I think. Because if this guy comes around, I have to deal with two of them. Could be a bit rough. Uh, let's see what his range is. So he could definitely get out here. Uh, let's take cover behind this fence. He can't reach us. And he is melee. So, let's set up a quick overwatch there. And then let's bring Iram in. Uh, we could take this position for now. Oh, I meant to go here. That's fine. So, we won't have enough for an overwatch, unfortunately. But, uh, let's go. We're doing a pretty good job of dealing with all the henchmen while these big guys are running around. Nice overwatch through the window. That was pretty sick. There's the counterattack. Okay. Cool. This is going all right. Some of our guys are quite a bit lower than I would like. Um, but if we 
start kind of following Iron Floss around here, then when he gets kills, we can heal them up. Uh, I'm going to set an Overwatch there as well. And then it looks like they have vision through these windows. There's nothing I can really do to get there. Uh, he's got a visual there also. Hey, let's come around this way. I hope I'm doing an okay job of explaining it to you guys, because there are there's a, there's a lot to be thrown into, and if I wanted to make a four-hour video on this, easily could be done. Uh, but that's crazy. I'm gonna keep the Overwatch here. Uh, you can't do anything. Let's end it. So that button that I'm hitting down there, it automatically puts people into Overwatch and or... Oh, nice play. Nice play. That was good. So he came down, blew that tree down. He took a bunch of damage from that. Uh, we have an Overwatch here. How much damage can you do? Five to six. So that's killable if the Overwatch lands. Which means we have to somehow deal with that. 58% chance to cast that from here. So he's paralyzed, but I actually don't think that would even stop his attack from happening. What we may need to do... Let's see. Uh, do I just try and, like, dodge the Overwatch once? I think so. I'm going to go for it. We're pretty far away. Oh, he still got it. 51%. Yikes. That's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. 35% to hit down there. That is not good enough. We can do the electrocution. Even that is going to be unsuccessful, it seems. Now, she has this dark incantation ability. That's going to absorb AP from other people and give it to her. Uh, which I could use to move in, possibly. Um, I need to get a stun on this guy. Which we could do by coming over here and kicking, but then we're in the open. So I need to somehow secure a stun back here. And maybe what we do is pull this uh, table into him, if possible. Let's see. Yeah, 100%. I could pull him, but that doesn't stun. Deadly. Okay, that's amazing. And then I'm thinking if we kick him into the wall, or if I come over here and kick him into his buddy, that might even be better. There we go. Both stunned. Both in the open. Uh, now, if we have an electrocute, they're definitely going to want to run away. So this would be a good option. Still only 50% chance. Our accuracy is rough. Oh, that's right. She, uh, I think she got blinded. So our accuracy is really in the crap right now. We can still try it, but then it puts us on cooldown, right? You know what? Let's try it. 50%. Didn't work out. <laughs> it did not work out the way we planned. That's fine. Uh, let's come in here. Just a standard attack. Let's do it. Now, because we're he was in our zone of control, so we get that reaction as he tries to leave. Very nice. And we got that heal up that we really needed. Walter Skull Splitter got a promotion. What do we want to improve here? Applies bleeding, causes... An extra one damage per turn for two turns. Bleeding can stack. Let's see. Dash and slash. Reduce the cooldown. I like that a lot. Let's do this. Because the more often we can move her, the better. She needs to be in close. Now, how are we going to stun here? We need to somehow... 
might require some finagling, if you will. So he's ranged, and then he's got the Holy Light to heal. He applies that blind. We're only at four health, though, so... We have to be a bit concerned. Oh, do we have our rally? Uh, encourage, we'll call it. Yeah, sure. So, what we can do is I can use 2 AP to move here. Then we can grant him an extra action. And we can kick that, uh, we can kick that over and stun him. Let's go for it. There we go. Got the stun and not to mention the six damage. Uh, we can come in here for a pretty... Well, he's got... That's just fine. Let's hope our chances are good enough. Oh, right. I just used uh, Encourage, so I'm not going to be able to pull that off. That's fine. Uh, we also have Blink, which can be utilized to get us through walls on uh, our Mage class here. So, And it costs only 1 AP, so you can use it to get a lot of movement. Let's go here. And then we can take a shot. 56. Okay, we're not hitting any of those risky ones. None of them. Uh, dash and slash. If we go here, we go dash and slash. And then she gets the attacks. Nice. Okay. We're handling it. We are handling it. Um, eliminate Grandel. We need to find him. Let's lead with... Uh, actually, hold on. Dexter, let's just get you kind of caught up. Oh, so close. She's very close to going down. She had one health right now. Uh, we do have Permadeath turned on, which is an option. You don't have to play with Permadeath. Okay. Bunch of basic guys. And then more of an elite near the back. Let's see. So he can throw rocks. Does bleeding. Or melee. Same thing there. Same thing there. And then this guy's got more of that whirlwind. He's got a blink. Hey, scary. He's got a lot of abilities. Uh, but he doesn't have stun protection. So that's our key here. That's our key to victory. Where can this guy reach? So he can come all the way over here. Maybe throw a rock at us or something. I'm going to tuck in this side for now. And then let's move these guys up for what I think we're going to do is overwatch. Behind the door. And then our one health mage. If this guy runs down here and throws a rock and hits us, I will be a little bit devastated. Let's go for it. There's nothing I can really do. You go for the wind. 61% to hit this. It's just so far. And see, so you get buffs on your accuracy for inanimate objects that you're targeting. I don't know if this would work if we hit this into this. You guys are just out of range. Okay, let's overwatch. And then Skull Splitter. We're going to sit back here for now. And let's see what they do. Ooh. Oh. Hey, okay, good, 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 good. That is good. Uh, the other thing, too, when you're highlighting a square to be able to see who you can target, uh, see how this guy glows up uh, in red? That means you can target him from there. If we go somewhere like here, no glow. So 
Oh, that's rough. Okay, we found our target that we want to save. Are they off schedule? Yeah, you go check. Okay, actually, that could be good. Run down, now you die. You were supposed to rot... <laughs> To riot two days from now, fool. Okay, so I wonder if we control her now. Yes, we do. Okay, so we've seen this before, or I've seen this before in a previous uh, mission type. Uh, she's going to need to get out of there, for sure. But... This guy's kind of out of position now. Rondell the Liberator. So he's got a battle cry. All allied units move closer to the Savage, which is him, uh, while maintaining cover. Interesting. He's got the kicks and he's got the claw attack. So the kicks is what we need to watch for. However, um, we're going to focus on trying our best to, uh, to kill him or stun him, control him a little bit. If I came in here, how does this feel? I come in here, I use our dash and slash for an extra action, and then I kill him. We have our encourage. We do. Maybe it's better for me to do that with him so that we can heal up everybody over here. I think so. So Encourage is going to cost two. So let, Or sorry, Encourage is going to cost one. So let's move us in. Let's Encourage here. And then if we kill this... Everybody gets some extra health, which is sorely needed. And we leveled up. Excellent. Let's see. What do we want to do here? Grapple hook cooldown reduced? I think so. Yeah. Let's reduce that. We could go into a new ability as well. So when you select a new ability, you get... It seems to be very random which ones come up. Um, but here we go. You can see some of the environmental interactions. You can put out fires, reduce friction, so the object can be pushed further. There's a lot... There's a lot of detail here. There's tons. And it's just really hard to explain all of it right now. Uh, we have a pretty good attack from here, actually. Um, if I just move in here and then use wind on him to push him back. Let's start with this. Eighty-four percent. Okay, cool. Now, he... Let's see. Does he have it? Yeah. Uh, wait, hold on. He might have had the stun protection, but because he ricocheted a bunch, he just took the damage instead. Uh, let's take the 69% shot. Finally. Finally, something low is hitting. And then, I think I might hide back here. Where's this guy got range to? Yeah, he can come down here if he wants, I guess. And he can throw rocks, so... I think we come here. We'll do the free action. We'll kick this to stun. We might die, depending on how this guy handles things, because he might come around here. Oh, hit the top thing. <laughs> I meant to go for the bottom. I don't know if it matters, but either way, cool. And then Dexter... He uses this opportunity to move in a little closer, maybe. Let's do that. Uh, we haven't touched on this ability. It's a lift, so you can kind of... Oh, whoa. Did not see that. Did not see that. Oops. There's the blink. We're now... Oh, he froze us. Nice. Uh, there's an ability so you can basically move uh, objects. 
So as you can see in the animation here, you, it's, you can't move it a lot. There are ways to upgrade this, but you can remove cover uh, from somebody else, give it to you, vice versa. Uh, so he does have this stun protection. So we need to get those multiple bounces to kill. Uh, now that we're frozen, let's see here. Minus five speed for two turns. Okay, we can actually still get in here. Now let's see how this works with the door protecting him. Nice. Uh, let's go in for this kill. Okay, and then lastly, a ram. How do we, how do we finish this off? If I go in here, I think the play. I think the play is to stun him. He's got a lot of health that we need to chew through. So we come down here and then we stun. Uh, can I get five damage in? I think between between these two, I think so. I'm gonna come and stand in the open. Just to get our chances as good as possible. 91. Are you kidding me, XCOM? <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Fine. What about a fireball? Is this an area flame? Cannot miss. Causes four damage. And causes damage based on the fire's intensity for two turns. Maybe that's what I should do. Four damage, two AP. And then he should die from the burning. Oh, is he bleeding as well? Or is that us? I think that's us. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's take care of this first. Okay, so he's stunned. Let's set the fire here. Ooh, he blocked one of those. I don't... Okay. I don't know if that's going to kill him. She's got a lot of health, so you know what? I'm just going to go right next to him. And if, she, if we can tank some damage there, that could be nice. Ooh, boy. We didn't die. <laughs> this is really close. We have to end it this turn or else he's going to die out next turn. Can we do that is the question. Six to seven damage here. I think that's a good start. And then we bring her in. He might even end it if he's the main. Okay, no. Let's finish it. <sighs> dicey. Dicey. Very dicey. I'm going to skip this because, you know, spoilers if you're going to play through the story and stuff. So that was a difficulty of B. The highest being uh, an A that I've seen. Um... That was very challenging. Thank God we got her at the end because it would have been a lot more difficult. Uh, but then it gives you a grade based on your kills, your physics damage, enemy stun, damage received, and the number of turns. So we definitely could have done things a lot more optimally. Um, but against some of the new abilities that we've seen, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, let's just take a few minutes to kind of go over some of the other aspects of this game. Uh, I know that was probably a really long fight. Kudos to you if you've made it this far. Um, obviously, you like what you see, if that's the case. Now, this has just unlocked uh, a big deal for us here. Okay, this is the next story mission. It always shows you where that is. But you're going to notice a whole bunch of other things happening on this map. So this is our current party. Um, we had five people in here, but when you do these story missions, uh, if you see here, story missions summon the strongest heroes of each class. So you go in with four, uh, and it just brings whoever's strongest from your team. There's also things along the uh, map that you can collect. So Magic Distiller provides one magic per day. This is good. We want that. 
these are your different um, resources at the top. So this is basically your money, your magic. This is kind of your uh, your medals earned from combat. And you use these to upgrade your fort, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, there's tons of little encounters typically guarding things. So we can find this plate armor, for example. But you'd have to kill the skeletons. Um, and these battles are a lot shorter. Those story ones typically quite a bit longer. Now, what's this blue banner? Well, that's the enemy. So these guys are going to be going towards our base. And when they go towards our base, you have to defend it. So it's a good idea to have some people in your base. If you don't, there's certain buildings at your base that can help to give um, some people to defend it. And if I can find it here, is it the castle? Yeah. So during a siege, if you have the castle, it provides a controllable ballista, uh, a champion, a wizard, and a priest. And the health of defending units is increased by three. This is huge because I got attacked before I had this castle. And uh, I had to defend with like a peasant. Uh, like three peasants. It was really, it was rough. Um, you spend your money on these upgrades. You can see the infirmary increases maximum health of all units by two. Uh, this increases the beet farm production. So this is your money. These are like beets. Um, beet coins, I should say. Physics class increases the force applied by units basic abilities like kick, grapple hook, knockback, or whirlwind. So you can just like buff all of your guys and this is really where your money should go. What else do you spend your money on? You spend it on, on your guild. So when we first started, I had a party size of three, I think. And uh, we've gotten it up to five now based on these metals that we've spent. Uh, you can upgrade weapons here, so you can increase damage dealt. You can reduce damage dealt to you. Um, units start with an extra action point at the start of battle. Like, all of these are really nice. And we just got a ton of medals, so we could be upgrading whatever we want. And then lastly, you recruit heroes through here as well. So uh, you can see what type they are just based on a glance. You've got your rangers, your mage, and then your paladins here. Um, and they all have these kind of quirks or traits that are randomized as well. Uh, so yeah, this is like a basic gist of the game. The premise, of course, is to defeat the, the bad guys. Uh, and you do that via following these story missions. I'm not sure how long it is, um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of content in here. This game's history started on Kickstarter, I believe. Then it was an early access for like the past two or three years. And it's constantly improved. It's constantly gotten better. And I actually... I think a lot of people are going to love this. This is really cool. The combat's unique. It's all it's trying to take advantage of all those physics um, physics opportunities is really fun. And there's probably situations in that combat where I could have maybe demonstrated things a little bit clearer, um, but it's tough to think <laughs> semi-tactically and uh, try to explain it all as well. So hopefully I did an okay job of exploring that with you guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I feel like this is a pretty good overview of the game, and I highly suggest that you go and check it out if you're into any type of tactics games. Uh, when I sat down to learn this game, as I say, I played for about three and a half hours, and it flew by. I enjoyed it all, and uh, I think that you guys are going to like this. So, Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions, ask. I'll do my best to answer them. I'll have links to all the relevant pages down below. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This was Fort Triumph, and we will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.